no surprise right from the moment that the flag came in there was plenty of activity a group of five riders had extended an advantage by the time they came to that first uh, first climb of the day where Charmig in the mountains jersey took the top points John Castro Viejo led the main peloton over as he chased on behalf of uh, overall race leader Ethan Hayter down to 128 shoulder to the wheel bent low over the bars that tells you what uh, Look at the shoulders rocking. A little bit of excitement from the main peloton, and somewhat surprisingly, it's the local team, Team Coop, down to the final 10 miles of racing, just over 16 kilometers remaining. They're going on the counter attack, and that one's covered nicely by the Ineos Grenadiers squad. They put Basso into, uh, into the fight. Looks a bit like uh, Lechnesund, so clearly the, uh, the local riders want to get involved in this one. So there'll be a quick analysis at 180, 200 beats a minute from those riders close to the front and it's caused a split, hasn't it? But let's have a look at this and keep uh, keep a close eye and we're watching to see the rider at the very back of this group. I believe it could well be the overall race leader. Bora Hansgrohe, three riders on the front. They'll tie it up together. Not before a moment of panic. The overall race leader heading off up uh, the road and clear of the rest. For Hayter it was a a useful and sensible move really because he stayed in the wheels stayed alive to the danger so we're into the final kilometer under the kite we hit the hill this is where things get difficult and this is where the race uh, really lights up amongst the leading contenders a thousand meters to glory and it's the trek segafredo squad that want to go for it and this is the uh, former european champion himself that's trying to set it up the reigning champion of this event but it's beestrom that's going for glory now and he's got uh, for company looks like shaw of the Ribble well tight squad inside the final four five hundred meters where's the overall race leader he's in about seventh position at the moment Beestrom's going and he's got Shaw right on his wheel in prime position Ethan Hayter picks up and is uh, ready to launch looks like Tennyson there thereabouts as well and the man in the blue jersey is Edith Schelling just uh, tracking the overall race leader the blue jersey into the final 200 meters behind the yellow jersey but are they going to have the legs to get up and on terms now van der sander wants to get involved as well from third position and uh, i don't think it's sure i think it could well be walls for the ribble well tight squad they're not going to be involved in the final hunt for glory though as here comes ethan hater around the outside trying to find a position could we go for a second successive victory it's going to be the overall race leader that gets it the world's longest sprint and ethan hater timed his run to absolute perfection he gets a second successive victory he extends it advantage at the head of general classification a beautiful conversion another win for ethan hater So the stage goes to Ethan Hayter, ahead of Tosh van der Sande, Mike Tunison, Schelling, close but no cigar, Svenny Bistrom in fifth, uh, Asphalt, Shaw and the rest. Oh, it was crazy coming into it. Actually following the attack, it was really dangerous and I thought actually it would position me well for the climb, even if we kind of come back. I probably shouldn't have gone with it in the end, but you have to try, have to defend the jersey. So, uh, and then it just got really crazy when the catch was made. And like I was out of position, but found my, I think people were starting to die before the climb even. Found my way through, worked my way up and kept my position, tried to like slowly move up and then uh, sprint up about 50 meters to go, which is like crazy late, but it was enough to win, yeah. You let out a big roar coming across the line. Uh, what does another win here mean to you? Yeah, today was, I was suffering today to be honest. <laughs> And I wasn't sure if we'd bring back the break or not because it was strong and uh, I was kind of worried about the time bonuses as well and if that would, you know, because I was in the lead, but it's a bike race and you've got to go for it and uh, it's paid off again. I mean, I t literally no one, people started to help us at the end, but for most of the day we just had uh, three of our team on the front just pulling away all day, so that was amazing. He's off to the podium. It's time to uh, celebrate an extension of the overall lead of Ethan Hayter as he's up to 15 seconds now ahead of Ida Schelling. Mick Tunison up to third at 29 seconds. Shaw, as a result of his heroics, is, sits at uh, 33 seconds. Oswald, Hulgard, and the rest through the top 10. So we look at the points classification now. Four, po four point margin indeed between Ethan Hayter and Ida Schelling. And Tunison uh, in turn now is in the hunt for the points classification. 
Marshall and the rest, of course. Those GC fighters from the first couple of days of action. The mountains classification, a bit of daylight now between uh, Charmig and the rest. Everson, uh, Hiem Saiter, Julian Mertens, Foss and the others from the break intermingled with riders from yesterday's summit finish. Now the young rider classification is the preserve of Matthias Jensen now with a 17 second margin over Andreas Lechnersund of Team DSM who did some great work in the finale today as indeed did Mark Donovan since third in the young rider competition.